Wait! Don't go! I cried out instinctively upon hearing the engine noise of the car suddenly accelerating in the middle of the forest at night. My husband, who was driving, gave me a smug and unpleasant smile. <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? Did you really think I drove all the way out here? For the sake of a crazy old woman, an ugly wife. It was all a lie. Every bit of it. A lie. No. How can you? I stared suddenly at the car's headlights and hugged my mother's shoulder tightly. Keep babbling all you want. You're not getting out of here anyway. Thanks for falling for it. Both of you. See ya. Without the energy to chase after the receding car, I slumped and despaired. What would I do? We've been left behind in this forest. I have no idea which way to go. Help! Someone, please, help! Just as tears were about to spill from my eyes. You are there. I see you. Mom! Your father is calling. Come this way, Julie. My mother gently took my hand and we slowly start walking. My name is Julie and I am a stay-at-home wife, just like any other. I've been married to my husband Archie for over 15 years now. Perhaps due to the fact that we don't have any children, our conversations have become few and far between in recent years. While I don't talk much with Archie, I live with my parents, who serve as good conversation partners. Despite their age, my parents are strong and healthy for now. However, for Archie, this situation is far from comfortable. He works overtime and is hardly ever home on weekends or weekdays. On days when he gets off work at a normal time, he always goes out drinking and doesn't come home until late at night. Although there is no particular bad blood between Archie and my parents, it seems that the distance between a son-in-law and his in-laws is something that can never be bridged. I don't want to make things any more uncomfortable for Archie than they already are. Furthermore, I try not to think about it too much. But there is no telling when my parents will no longer be healthy. As they continue to age, it's inevitable that they will pass away before Archie and I. When that happens, our family will only be me and him. And it's far too sad to continue living in this unemotional marriage. I want to do something about it, but I've somehow lost the ability to talk to my husband. Just as I was worrying about these things, something unexpected happened. My father suddenly complained of a severe headache and was rushed to the hospital. The results of his test revealed that he had a brain tumor and was given a year to live. The tumor was located in a spot where surgery was not possible, and it was uncertain whether treatments such as radiation therapy would be effective. Either way, I want my father to live as long as possible. He was immediately admitted to the hospital and began receiving palliative care. We couldn't accept the reality that my father would soon be gone. However, we couldn't do nothing either. Because we didn't know how much time we had left with him, we wanted to visit him as much as possible. This is normal feeling for any family. So my mother and I visited my father almost every day and took care of him. However, there was one thing that bothered me. Archie never came to visit my father. It's understandable that Archie and I have different feelings about my father, despite being family. After all, we don't share the same blood, and we have spent different amounts of time with my father. I understand this. However, isn't it strange that Archie has never come to visit my father even once? Especially when my father has already been given a year to live. Is this a lack of compassion on his part? Or am I just expecting too much? To be honest, I no longer understand his feelings or thoughts. 
My father also seemed to feel lonely because Archie never came to visit. Eventually, my father passed away without ever meeting Archie since he was hospitalized. Even though we had prepared ourselves for his terminal diagnosis, saying goodbye to my father brought a deep sense of loss to me and my mother. My mother in particular became so depressed that she seemed to lose the will to live. Even then, I took care of all the preparations for my father's funeral, as Archie hardly helped at all. In fact, I overheard him muttering that there was no need to hold a funeral, which made me feel disappointed in him. Nonetheless, I managed to get through my father's funeral as the chief mourner. My father's friends were all truly good people, and they all told me that we had lost a wonderful person. I was glad to know that my father was truly loved by many people. After the funeral, my mother remained deeply depressed for some time. It was understandable that she felt that way, having lost her longtime husband. However, her behavior was not just limited to feeling down. My mother began to talk to someone facing the wall from time to time. Archie must have noticed this strange behavior, and he spoke to me for the first time in a long time. Hey, isn't that dangerous? Is your mother finally losing it? My husband's words were harsh, but I couldn't blame him for thinking that way when he saw her like that. So, all I could do was remain silent. One day, as usual, my mother was feeling down and repeating herself when Archie approached me again. Hey, about your mom? It's sad that dad passed away, but we can't let her stay like this forever. This is a perfect time for a family trip, don't you think? It will definitely be a good change of pace. I was surprised by my husband's sudden proposal. After all, Archie and I hadn't had a real conversation in a long time. Archie had invited us on a family trip, so maybe he was also thinking about our relationship going forward. Yeah, good idea. Let's go on a family trip. I immediately agreed to my husband's invitation. I told my mother about it, and although she thought about it for a while, she eventually agreed. A few weeks later, we departed in the evening for our family trip. Archie said it was a bit of a distance, but if we drove, we could arrive the next morning. We drove on the highway for a few hours, but at one point, Archie got off the highway and onto a regular road. We were in the middle of the countryside, with almost no houses around, and the area was mostly cornfields. I vaguely remembered Archie saying that he had booked a traditional inn. But how could it be in a place like this? Despite my concerns, Archie kept dropping deeper and deeper into the forest. I became quite worried and asked him about our destination. Where are we going exactly, Archie? Oh, there's a place nearby where you can see a breathtaking starry sky. It's a little far from the inn, but since we are so close, let's go check it out. Seeing something beautiful might clear our minds, don't you think? I see. So that's what you had in mind. What a pleasant surprise. After driving for a while, Archie parked the car deep in a deserted forest. He got out of the car and guided me and my mother. As we followed him, the dense trees gradually thinned out and the sky opened up to reveal a starly sky as far as the eye could see. What a wonderful sight. I was speechless and my mother murmured, how beautiful. I sensed that my mother's spirits had lifted a little upon hearing her words. Of all the things Archie had done for us so far, this might be the most enjoyable. It felt like our relationship until now had been nothing but a lie. As we were captivated by the starry sky, Archie called out to us. I brought coffee, but I forgot it in the car, so I'll go get it. You two wait here. Archie said this, 
and went back to the car with a flashlight. I couldn't believe how thoughtful he was. I was starting to fall in love with my husband all over again. As I watched him walk away, my mother began to speak to herself. Ever since your father passed away, I haven't been able to feel any colors when I look at things, and I've been looking down all the time. But today, I looked up the sky for the first time in a long time, and there were stars shining so brightly and vividly. I've lived a long time, but I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful sky before. I wish I could have shown it to your father too. Mom, yeah, I know. While watching my mother shed tears as she gazed at the starry sky, I too felt a lump in my throat. It's natural that my mother still can't wipe away the sense of loss from my father's passing. However, she seemed a little more positive than before. It's thanks to Archie, and I'm glad for that. When he comes back. I have to thank him. At that moment, the sound of a car engine approached. It was an unnaturally loud sound that didn't seem to fit in with the surroundings. I turned around to see Archie's car moving and the headlights turning on. Then, my husband, who was in the driver's seat, smirked with an unpleasant grin on his face. <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? Did you really think I drove all the way here for the sake of a crazy old woman and an ugly wife? It was all a lie, every bit of it, a lie. No, how can you? I stared silently at the car's headlights and hugged my mother's shoulder tightly. Keep babbling all you want. You're not getting out of here anyway. Thanks for falling for it. Both of you. See ya. I slumped down without the energy to chase after the receding car. What should I do? We've been left behind in this forest, and I have no idea which way to go. Archie even took the flashlight with him. Although my cell phone's light can be used, it's not enough to show me where to walk. Wandering around aimlessly would waste our energy. Besides, I'm already a middle-aged woman who gets tired easily, and my mother is even more exhausted. Can we make it back to where there are people? We wait until morning. Moreover, the temperature is dropping. Can our bodies withstand spending the night in a place like this? As anxiety breeds more anxiety, I gradually fall into panic. Someone. Help us! At that moment, when I felt like I was in danger, my mother suddenly spoke up. Your father is calling us. Saying that, she started walking. For that moment, I wondered if we were fated to die here and join my father. But as I followed my mother, I realized that wasn't the case. The truth is. My mother has the ability to communicate with the deceased. However, she has had bitter experiences. People around her thought it was creepy and kept their distance. And even those who believed in her ability only saw her as a tool to make money. My mother herself wasn't fond of her mysterious ability, and when she taught me about it, she made me promise not to tell anyone. So when my mother started talking to the wall, I was unsure whether to tell Archie about her ability or not. Anyway, my mother seems to be talking to my deceased father now. I decided to follow her obediently as she walked forward step by step. After walking for about two hours, we miraculously reached a road. We rested and walked some more, and despite the late hour. The car drove past us briefly, but then stopped and rolled down the window to talk to us. Are you okay? I was about to cry with joy when we finally meet someone. My mother and I approached the driver and explained our situation. The driver turned out to be a college student, 
who was visiting the area to film videos. At first, when he saw us, he thought he had encountered a ghost, but it turned out we were real people. So he spoke to us. Well, if my mother really was walking with the guidance of my deceased father, then, in a way, there might have been a ghost. Anyway, they kindly listened to our situation and offered us a ride in their car, which helped us escape from the forest. A few hours later, when we returned home, there was a strange woman cuddling with Archie. When he saw us, Archie was surprised and shouted, Why are you alive? He thought it was possible for us to walk back from the forest. Damn it! If that's the case, I'll send you back again. Archie said as he came towards me and my mother. Before he could grab me, a police officer jumped out from behind me and apprehended him. Actually, after the college student dropped us off in town, my mother and I reported the whole incident to the police. The college student testified that he had picked us up, and the police officer accompanied us home. Archie, who didn't know about this, confessed to what he had done to us in front of the police officer. He was taken away in a police car with his arms firmly held on both sides. Damn it! This wasn't supposed to happen! Archie shouted from inside the police car, but I glared back at him fiercely. In this way, my mother and I were saved from danger. In the aftermath, Archie confessed everything to the police. He had been having an affair with a woman named Stella for several years. I thought he had really been at home because he was uncomfortable there, but it seems he was mostly absent because of the affair. Then one day, Archie was caught by my father at the scene of his infidelity and scolded for it. As a man, I can understand the feeling of being attracted to other women. But as a father, it is absolutely unacceptable to make Julie sad. So, before it was discovered and hurt your family, you should have ended your relationship with Stella. Got it? At that time, Archie quietly followed my father's words. However, in the end, Archie did not break off his relationship with Stella and try to avoid my father as much as possible. Then, when my father was hospitalized with a brain tumor, Archie was able to freely meet with Stella and never came to visit my father. After my father passed away, Archie's fear of being caught for infidelity disappeared and he seemed to be in high spirits. Then, Archie witnessed my mother's strange behavior and told Stella about it. Then, if you dispose of the demented old lady and our daughter, the inheritance will be yours, Archie. Upon hearing this, Archie came up with a plan to leave us stranded in the forest. In reality, we were left behind and it could have been dangerous for us. However, Archie and Stella miscalculated that my mother was not demented, but had a strange ability to communicate with the deceased. Thanks to that, we were able to return safely with the help of my deceased father. After a while, Archie was sentenced to prison, and Stella was arrested as an accomplice. Archie and I divorced, and I finally became free from being the wife of a criminal. If he had continued to maintain a peaceful relationship with his wife, he would have at least received some inheritance in the future. However, due to being blinded by his immediate desire, he not only lost his inheritance, but also his future. What a foolish man he was! Later, my mother and I erected a tombstone on the land that my father had owned as a tribute to him. Although it was not a large area, it was a beautiful place with a stunning night sky. My mother and I expressed our gratitude to my father once again 
for saving us from the forest. When I asked my mother if my father was saying anything, she shook her head. But there was no sadness on her face. Mother said that my father was no longer with us and that he had become at peace since Archie was caught by the police, leaving him with no regrets. But it's okay. I'm sure he has become a star and he is watching over us. Saying this, my mother looked up at the sky and smiled. I did the same. And then suddenly, a warm breeze surrounded us. Oh, that must be dad! I exclaimed, and my mother chuckled and said, Yes, I'm sure it is him. Smiling at each other beneath the night sky, I made a vow to treasure the time I have with my mother and live the rest of my life fully.